Hi, this is Paul. This video is going to be some integration work with respect to thinking about extended bodies like the Christian Reformed Church and how those bodies live and live and die, perhaps, how they relate to another, how we within them, within the agent arena relationship react. Now, I did some writing about this on CRC Voices today, and I used some of the nomenclature that I use on my channel, and some people on the on CRC Voices rightly said, what on earth do you mean by arenic? Now, those of us who are sort of following along with John Verveke, the agent arena relationship, um, I am an agent within an arena within my church. I am a pastor within my home. I am a father within my um marriage bed. I am a man and a husband. Um, on the street, I am a citizen. In the car, I am a driver. The identity, as this video that I made last week um, with, response to, with um, respect to Hans um, Georg Mueller and his looking at, um, at contrapoints, the agent arena relationship in many ways helps us sort out identity. My identity in the church is pastor. My identity in the church is also member. And these things are nested and these are complex, but understanding the agent arena relationship is very helpful in terms of sort of sorting things out. Now, I also, in this, in this channel, we've talked a lot about spiritual bodies. Um, body is, of course, a New Testament word that we use. We have the body of Christ. So the Christian Reformed Church is the body of Christ. The Christian Reformed Church is an extended body. The Christian Reformed Church has many members. The Christian Reformed Church is made up of many congregations. In the Christian Reformed Church, there are congregations, councils, classes, and synod. And synod is coming up in June, and that's going to be a very big deal this year in the Christian Reformed Church. One of the most important entities in the history of the Christian Reformed Church is the banner. And the banner, in fact, has a long history in the church. Uh, this is the banner that came out this week. It was mailed to my home address. Uh, various copies were mailed to the church. And the banner has been coming. Um, the banner has been coming to homes in the Christian Reformed Church. It used to be a subscription periodical. In fact, it used to be a weekly magazine. In my office, in fact, I have this copy of the banner from October 10, 9, um, October, I'm sorry, October 18, 1982. And the reason I have this copy of the banner is because that's my grandfather. My grandfather and a classmate of his, uh, Cornelius Skoland, uh, I believe they were, uh, they both went on the seminary choir tour in the early part of the 20th century, and we have my grandfather's journal and snapshots that he took on that tour. Uh, it's quite an interesting thing. I had it up on my blog years ago. I should probably resurrect it again. But this is sort of a nice thing to keep handy because this is a copy of the banner from October 18, 1982. 1982, October, I was just starting my sophomore year at Calvin College. And um, it's, it was sort of fun going through the banner and looking at the kinds of articles that were there. Now remember, this was a weekly publication in the Christian Reformed Church. The banner, in many ways, then was sort of the life was it was a very important organ of the body that was the Christian Reformed Church. Um, it was a way for people to sort of do sense making within the Christian Reformed Church with respect to the issues, what the Christian Reformed Church was. The banner's been around quite a few years. Recently, somebody had a whole collection of old banners that she was going through, and she was quite generous. She sent me this clipping of the Northside Gospel Mission. That was my father's uh, church. And I don't have the date on this of what, what banner this was. Um, on the other side, there is a... Um, on the last day of its meeting, our synod usually does much work, though it is always not always of good quality. So you had a little column about synod on that side. And here again is my, um, 
when my father's church just starting out was in a storefront in Patterson, New Jersey. Here's an even older copy of the banner. This, uh, this woman found the notice of Reverend Hiram Vander Clay installed at Lighton, Iowa. And so there's a picture of my grandfather and my grandmother. My father is the eldest. He's right here. Um, he was in high school at that point. My aunt, Glenda, right there. And my uncle, Dave, he's the only one of them still living. And so the banner was a way for churches to sort of keep up with each other and news was around. And so the installation, the Christian Farm Church was quite a bit smaller and the amount of news that the banner could cover in, this was in the 1950s, the amount of news that the banner could cover was quite a bit more. The banner, again, at that point was a subscription publication. You had to pay your own money to have the banner uh, delivered to your house. And for many of the the banner in many ways was sort of the, the lifeblood of the Christian Reformed Church. Now, a number of years ago, the banner went from a weekly publication eventually to a monthly publication, which it is now um, for a variety of reasons. And then a number of years ago, too, the banner went from a publication which was subscriber-supported to a publication which was denominational ministry share supported. And when that move was made, it was move, it was made because um, the idea was that a lot of the other publication that the denomination was doing, supporting overseas missions, supporting church planting in North America, um, media ministry, all of this would sort of be rolled into the banner. And so ostensibly, the denomination would save money on mail and printing, and a lot of this stuff would flow through the banner. And if you were a member of the Christian Reformed Church, your local church would send a spreadsheet of its membership to the denomination, and the denomination would mail banners. Now, some, some churches have get a whole big stack of banners that arrive at their church. Other, other churches, they, um, they get individually mailed to... Um, to the different homes. Now, this morning, a, a little, the banner has, the banner is not anywhere near as, I do not think the banner is as controversial as it used to be, because in many ways, it um, does the banner get into the weeds with respect to the Christian Reformed Church. This morning I posted, uh, there, there's a little, we'll start with a dust up. There was a dust up that happened recently with respect to the Christian Reformed Church and uh, Lloyd Hemstreet, who was on my channel not too long ago with Classis Zealand's very audacious overture to um, basically disband Classis Grand Rapids East on his own. Lloyd made his own little personal YouTube channel and he told this story, which I will share now. Hello, my name's Pastor Lloyd Hemstreet. I'm pastor at Coopersville CRC. But if you've seen me in a video before, it's a pretty good chance it was with the Abide Project, as I have done a little bit of the reporting with them. Um, many might say, unfortunately so. But my primary role or uh, way that I've helped out and served in the Abide Project is serving on the admin team and as treasurer of the Abide Project. Now, one of the things that the admin team was uh, tasked by the steering committee to go ahead and do earlier this uh, spring, all the way back in January, was we were looking for opportunities of getting our name out there more. And so we were looking for ways to connect with those across the Christian Reformed Church that are not familiar with who the Abide Project is and the work that we've been doing, uh, seeking to lead this denomination in a way that brings honor and glory to God. So the idea that we came up with was that of advertising. That's how you get your name out there when others haven't heard of you before. And we contacted our denominations uh, magazine, The Banner, and we came up with this. Now, now it's helpful to note that he published this 11 days ago. He had his banner in his hand. Mine just came last week. Now, I'm not criticizing anyone. This is just a function of the fact that if you live in West Michigan, you get your banner pretty quickly. If you live on the West Coast, you 
have to usually wait a couple of weeks. Again, this is not the fault of anyone at the banner, and I want to be very careful here because my I do not intend to take any cheap shots at the banner. It's just a function of the U.S. Postal Service and the fact of a dead tree publication, a paper publication, which is the banner. So I didn't actually catch that until I saw him pull up the banner. Said, That's the banner I just got ad that we requested hey would we be able to run something like that right there you can see uh nothing extreme nothing crazy going on just introducing ourselves to those that maybe hadn't heard of us before well the denomination uh or the the banner i'm sorry went ahead and examined that and after giving it some thought on wednesday january 25th of 2023 this was the response that we received from Ron Agner, who is the Banner uh, Marketing and Business Development Director. He responded back, Well, Lloyd, here's the response I received from Shio Chong, Editor-in-Chief. Quote, Based on our synodical advertising guidelines, specifically number four, advocacy and advertisements that take a position on issues being debated in the church will not be accepted. We have to turn down a by project ad for the same reason we have to turn we have turned down ads from All One Body in past years. The Abide Project should know who what All One Body is. It's their counterpoint in the same-sex marriage debate in the CRCNA. I think it will help smooth things over for them to know that we are not singling them out in denying their ad. We are trying to be consistent in applying the synodical guideline principle in this matter. Thank you for thinking of the banner for advertising your current and future initiatives. I hope this matter will be resolved in the CRC NA so that various ministries operating in this segment will have a place for their promotions. For now, it appears the banner has to sit this one out. Regard a very nice letter. And if if you're if you're around the Christian Reformed Church, you gotta know these are all very nice people. Okay? And and in this in this melee of culture war nastiness. Generally speaking, in the Christian Reformed Church, not a lot of nastiness. Now, there might be some Michigan nice, but not a lot of nastiness. It's Ron Agner. And so that was the response we had for our inquiry. And, you know, we have a little quibble about, you know, we're not exactly a counterpoint to all one body. All one body is pushing stuff that is goes against the teachings and decisions of our denomination, whereas... A uh, byproduct has come alongside what we have historically held, and, and, and what the point he makes there is actually a very important point because the abide by the abide project has always been in alignment with the teaching of the Christian Reformed Church, and in fact, as of Synod 2022, remains in alignment with the teachings of the Christian Reformed Church. It's that's really helpful. They are not advocating change. In fact, they are advocating no change. And affirmed over and over again, and even in 2022. But we went ahead and took that information and said, okay, that's data. And uh, went and were able to find some other places to share our ad in World Magazine and Christian Renewal and in Christian Courier, north of the border. So, okay, what he just labeled to World Magazine, some of you will be familiar with World La Magazine. It's a broadly, um, it's a conservative evangelical magazine that's non-denominational. You can find out there, I'm sure there are a number of Christian Reformed homes that subscribe to World Magazine. Christian Renewal is a periodical that's been around quite a while within the Christian Reformed Church when I was in seminary. That was a conservative, uh, quite a, a conservative magazine, quite critical of women in office. And I didn't even know the thing was around after saying this. Someone will probably send me a copy, <laughs> which you don't really need to. But um, I didn't even know it was around. I have vi vivid mem memories of being in Calvin Seminary and um, uh, individuals, I won't name their names because I still remember their names, uh, stuffing Christian renewal into all of the seminary mailboxes. Eventually, there was a uh, rule that made the seminary mailboxes off limits to such um, uh, di um, dissemination of certain periodicals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, what was the what was the third one that he mentioned? Imagine. 
we're able to find some other places to share our ad in World Magazine and Christian Renewal and in Christian Courier. North. Okay, Christian Courier is a Canadian magazine that is sort of focused on the Christian Reformed Church. Canadian, they really do a fine job um, on voices. The former editor, Harry De Nederlander, was a tremendous editor for that periodical. The current editor is also wonderful, and she's on Voices every now and then. Um, and so there, there are, in fact, sort of a constellation of periodicals that float around the Christian Reformed Church, but the, um, the official publication of the Christian Reformed Church remains the banner. It's owned by the denomination. It's paid for by the denomination. It is, a, it is fairly regularly a topic of controversy within the, phenomena, uh, the denomination. It has long been criticized within the denomination as, I would say, a mouthpiece for the establishment of the denomination. And part of what this current fight has illuminated is, in my opinion, how, especially by Synod 2022, how the establishment has gotten increasingly divorced from many who remain in the denomination and many who are more conservative, let's say, than the establishment of the denomination. North of the border. So imagine my surprise today when I got the latest copy of the banner, the May issue there, and flipped it over and on the back page, this is what I found. It's interesting data. How does that match up with synodical policy? I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, well, this has sort of become a big deal. So, Better Together is a group that have arisen and basically, ostensibly, that if you go to their website, and I'll include all of these links below, us versus them, red versus blue, progressive versus conservative, affirming versus traditional. If you're sick of picking sides, if all the division doesn't seem to line up the way of Jesus, if you're exhausted by all the arguments, if you're weary of the toll that is taking on your church, we hope you'll find us because there's a third way, a better way forward. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up what I wrote for Voices this morning. If the banner is your primary window into what is the CRC and what's happening in the CRC, what does the CRC look like? In other words, if you're a Christian Reform member in the arena of the CRC, how do you sort of get a picture? What is the, what is the picture in your mind, the arena view in your mind of the Christian Reform Church? Now, that would be a tremendously complex thing. And, and you would imagine that actually banners like these. Now, I also have here a whole pile of, I, I read for this channel a little while ago, 12 cents and 13 pounds of butter, and not very many of you watched it, but those of you did watch it said, oh, this was awesome, more of that. Um, my grandmother was a regular contributor to the banner uh, in the in the middle of the 20th century, and she would often contribute in the column Woman's World, which was um, seemed at some point to at least be edited by Mrs. Louis Burkoff. I assume that's that might have been the Louis Burkoff of the very famous Louis Burkoff systematic theology. And, and my grandmother would write pieces about all sorts of things. Um, here's one. My grandmother, for, uh, one of the churches that they took was in um, on Long Island, in West Sable, Long Island, and my grandmother loved going into New York City. And so here she sort of writes about New York City in comparison with the, the New Jerusalem. Um, oh, there's... There are lots of articles here that she wrote. I'm just trying to give you a sense of... I can pause so I can do my homework off the air. My grandmother loved the World's Fair that was happening in, in Flushing Meadows in New York City. Uh, would you like to spend a day at the fair with me? The, the New York World's Fair um, is about an hour's drive from our home. And then she talks about the World Fair. She's got an article on narcotics on drugs, She's, she, she wrote on a whole, a whole variety of things. 
So if the banner is your primary window into what this, what is the CRC, what's happening in this year, what does it look like? Would you have a clue as to what the next three years in the CRC might look like given Synod 2023? Now, I don't know, of course, but I think Synod 2023 is going to be enormously consequential. The agenda for Synod 2023 has come out, and any of you who are interested in it can download a PDF of the agenda. The big decision that everybody is watching is, of course, will the decision of Synod 2022 stand? The decisions, I've talked about the decisions of Synod 2022 a number of times on this, on, on my channel. And at this point, I think a lot of people were sort of caught, um, they're sort of caught flat-footed with respect to 2022. And so they're going to go to Synod 2023 and, you know, turn back the tide, let's say. Part of what is on the agenda for Synod 2023 is there were there was a committee that went to Classis Grand Rapids East and to Neeland Avenue Church and said to them, well, um, you should change your position right now. And the response that they got both from Neeland Avenue and, and Grand Rapids East was, we have absolutely no intention of changing. And so the question is going to be, how will Synod 2023 respond to that? Will Synod 2023 in some way attempt to discipline them um, or will they not discipline them now this is a big deal because part of what happened in the let's say the mother denomination of the christian reformed church which was the reformed church in america out of which the christian reformed church split in the middle of the 19th century was that there were a number of churches in the reformed church of america who were ordaining um, gay and lesbian individuals in same-sex relationships and classes were not disciplining them and the overall denomination had no way to discipline them and so that sort of festered in the denomination until basically last year the denomination has splintered and fractured i've spoken about this in previous videos all um the alliance of reformed churches is one of the reformed church of america offshoots Others have been thinking about entering the Christian Reformed Church. A lot of people are probably waiting for Synod 2023 because if Synod 2023 holds the line on the decisions of Synod 2022 and, in fact, goes forward to discipline in some way, it's not exactly clear what form that discipline would take or how it would be affected, um, then suddenly a lot of people in the Christian Reformed Church are going to figure out okay, is this the place for us? Now, part of my take on this current crisis is that in many ways, the denomination has been in significant decline for quite a while, quite apart from this issue. And so in some ways, I liken the Christian Reformed Church to be in the hospital with COVID Probably because of its congestive heart failure and its diabetes, probably better diabetes, it's, um, and it's not doing well as a denomination, generally speaking. And now this issue comes along, and I believe there will be departures from the denomination. Um, I mentioned before that I, in my classes, was a part of the group that worked with uh, First Rip and Christian Reformed Church as it left the denomination. I think the only question at this point is how big will the departure leave be and in what direction? Um, is the banner a patient on a COVID ventilator dreaming of Christianity Today or journalism prizes? If you would take a look at the banner, you would have very little sense that there is in fact any crisis at all. About the only way you might get a sense of the crisis would be to look at their ongoing national appeal for money to try to raise money directly for the banner. But if you sort of peruse the articles in it, um, and again, it's, it's fine. They're fine articles. Some of the articles are newsy. There, there are a couple articles that deal with the um, 
deal with, uh, as I was saying, is something that the current editor sort of rolled out. Um, well, after a decade of ministry in the CRCNA, it's finally happened. I've been delegated to Senate. It's my first time. So this is Brandon Hahn. I go with fear and trembling, not because of the nuances or challenges of steering through the important conversations. And he mentions the mentions what's going on. Um, and basically takes up a little bit of the a little bit of the debate. The article that is probably gathering a fair amount of attention deals with Lloyd Hemstreet's observation about Better Together. In the Mayprint issue, we published an ad for the group Better Together, a third way, which drew some reactions and criticisms. I would like to respond to these concerns. This is from the editor-in-chief, Xiao, Xiao Shang. First and foremost, foremost, advertising in the banner does not imply editorial endorsement. This has always been the case, and that disclaimer is always printed at the header of the classified section. Second, decisions to accept or reject advertising in the magazine are made by the banner staff, without input from any other C or CNA ministry staff, including our advising guidelines, using our advising guidelines received from Synod um, 1998. The editor-in-chief and the director of ministry support services, as his immediate supervisor, made decisions on any ads that are in question. We also wish to provide you with a bit of background for this particular decision. Previously, based on the advertising guideline number four, which states advocacy advertisements that take a position on issuing issues being debated in the church will not be accepted, we, editor-in-chief and supervisor, have declined ad requests from groups All One Body and the Abide Project. We deem their ads violated that guideline as they were promoting positions on different sides of the same-sex marriage debate currently taking place in the CRCNA. Now, what's interesting there is because, okay, what, now we're going to think about an extended body. Can you actually produce a magazine that isn't, what isn't up for debate in the Christian Reformed Church? Now, all one abide, all one body's posture is to change the position of the Christian Reformed Church, and abide is to, is to basically not change. So that's their position. We decided to accept the ad from Better Together because we did not think their public stance violated the guidelines using the same parameters that had been used for the previous two groups. We, editor-in-chief and supervisor, understood better together as not taking a position on either side of the same-sex marriage issue. The question, of course, is, um, are they not taking a position to not discipline Neeland? But rather seeking unity not unanimity across disagreements. That was our decision based on a general survey of their mission and vision as published on their website per our normal procedure. Our late February, April print news story about the group did not change our impression. However, based on the negative reactions we received from the May ad, it seems, now this is fast because again, I just got mine. <laughs> it seems that we might have misconstrued the public's perception of the group. That's the line that caught my attention. I would imagine the banner to be to sort of have its finger on the pulse of the denomination, to have a good understanding of the relevant players in question. I'm not saying this to promote CRC Voices. Since I've been talking about the CRC Voices on my video, we've gained a lot of new people, and that has... Sort of like you have a little church that's always wanting to grow and then suddenly it doubles and triples in size within a year. You know who's most disgruntled? The old members who are praying for it to grow. Uh, CRC Voices can be kind of like that. Uh, CRC Voices has sort of been overwhelmed by a bunch of new voices, many of whom have come into the arena of CRC Voices wanting to debate what's going on. CRC Voices and the old timers there continue to try to be hospitable hosts and to try to create a, an arena where productive conversation can take place. But to not understand the public perception of better together, that drew my attention. I'll just finish reading it and then I'll go on. 
Not being involved or in the loop of any of Better Together's activities, I, the editor, was not aware of these perceptions. That's on his desk. Given these perceptions, and out of courtesy to our readers, we felt it prudent at this time to pull Better Together's second ad that we had originally accepted in conjunction with the May ad. We are sorry for any confusion and alarm caused by our decision. It was not our intent to show favor or to discriminate against any group. I'll take them at their word for that. The difficulty is that if you read my posts on CRC Voices, Part of what has been in this drama has been the arena of the Christian Reformed Church has been governed by, let's say, the establishment. And the establishment is fairly amorphic. They're, they're, they're diverse in terms of a whole variety of perspectives. But as a whole, they sort of set a tone for the denomination. A while ago, I had my friends Zach, um, Pastor Zach and Pastor Mark from from Ammon Valley, a little further from in Ripon. I was on their podcast. I shared my conversation with them. Zach was a delegate with me at, at Synod last year. I uh, very much enjoyed sitting next to him at Synod, getting to know him. I have very much enjoyed being a colleague of Mark's. They have their own podcast, Reformed Podmatics, which, um, which they started during COVID as a way to communicate with their congregation and a way to communicate. And it's been picked up by others in the denomination. Someone posted on, uh, they have a tone in their podcast that you would never hear from the establishment. There are these different voices within the Christian Reformed Church that are different from the establishment. This develops the sort of rivalry, we might even think of it as mimetic rivalry, if we think of Luke Burgess's book, uh, which, which um, takes on Rene Girard's sort of language. There's always a degree of competition and rivalry within a small denomination like there's in the Christian Reformed Church. And so you, you understand that the, you want a degree of you want a degree of conflict, healthy tension within a denomination in order to process the kinds of questions that a denomination has to process. And that conflict, in fact, not only processes questions, but generates answers that within the field of that extended body over time either are found to sort of work or not work. And in any healthy ecosystem, healthy collective body, you're going to have those kinds of things. I often talk about a consciousness congress within my own head. I have many of those voices within my own head. And when something happens, we sort of debate ourselves with respect to this. But the perception of better together was really interesting. I don't remember if I made a video about it. At a classes meeting that was reported by many in the Abide Project, the classes Grand Rapids East, I believe I talked about that, uh, took $5,000 from their missions fund and they didn't name at classes what it would do. I suspect it folded into this project. Uh, what's interesting to me, well, let me get back to my note because that really gets at it that the banner editor didn't catch the perception of Better Together says a lot. Was Better Together where that $5,000 from Classes Grand Rapids East went? How much of that $5,000 is the total budget of Better Together? Did Grand Rapids East fund that ad through Better Together? I would think that these would be really interesting questions for a journalist closely tracking the current existential battle in the Christian Reformed Church might ask. Apparently, this isn't on the radar of the banner editor. That shocked me. Has the banner done a deep dive into the workings of Abide, All One Body, Hesed, or the impact of the social media on the Christian Reformed Church in North America? To me, these are likely the major issues of the last 10 years. The banner has a full-time editor. Maybe the editor isn't full-time. I don't know. Um, I um, One of the... Um, Someone on CRC Voices posted that the banner has maybe a total of three full-time equivalencies. So the banner is by no means sort of brimming with staff. And they sort of staff up when it comes to Synod because they, they really try to cover Synod. But for me, these questions get into the sense-making questions about 
okay, what is the Christian Reformed Church? And the, the deep sense-making questions that any member within the Christian Reformed Church has to sort of live with a low-resolution, rough draft picture of what the denomination is. And that's not a very interest. That's not a very that's not a very easy thing to come up with, and it's very different to articulate, and different people are going to have different ideas about what that means. Has the editor thought to give this any of his time, attention, or analysis? Um, in a way, this reaches down to the sense-making conversation and the body conversation that seems um, to endlessly fascinate me. A few years ago when Rebel Wisdom, and those of you watching this channel will know who Rebel Wisdom is, others of you won't, Rebel Wisdom was still up and running. A buzzword in my YouTube circles was sense-making. What do I mean by that? We all function as agents within an arena, our decisions, our perspectives, etc. John Verveke, one of my conversation partners, a cognitive science from, scientist from the University of Toronto, talks about the four Ps of knowledge. For many of us, the CRC is our church arena, but how do we get a sufficient sense of it so that we can navigate within, um, navigate within it with productive agency? The CRC is our local church. The CRC is our history within a network of institutions, Christian schools, churches, friendships, family relationships, practices, practices such as Sunday observance, old Dutch culture, um, having a Dutch culture in a non-Dutch culture world, my own growing up in Patterson, New Jersey, which was different than many in the Christian Reformed Church. The CRC is a denomination with a church order, three creeds, three confessions, applied in ways that were or were not. Um, and a video I haven't made yet is a video on the Harry Bohr episode, which I think is, is, is something, a, a number, one of the things that I've discovered is that a number of seminarians have written papers on this. But to me, it shows a lot of the unfinished business in terms of the Christian Reformed Church thinking about confessionality and how this works. How this intersects with the four Ps is that um, confessionality mostly is arranged with lists of subscription to propositional truth. That leaves out the procedural, the perspectival, and the participatory. And a lot of, when you have a conflict, it's usually fought on many levels, not just the propositional, even though the propositional sort of gets highlighted. Now, there's a video that just came out with uh, James K. A. Smith and a colleague of mine here in, in Central California, who's doing a church plant in Oakland. What's very interesting about the video is it didn't touch on any of this directly. It mostly had little intimations about things sort of on the edges. And it was ostensibly promoted by the Better Together group. Although, of course, you don't need any money to put a YouTube on YouTube. The James, the Jamie Smith video is a classic example of sense making. Lots of dog whistle types of things about unfinished or nostalgia or rule keeping, but very little direct address. 75 years ago, the banner was a weekly magazine. There was the Back to God Hour. There were Christian schools, Calvin College, a network of churches. Relationships were in print or face-to-face -face for the most part. Synod was two weeks long, and many of the relationships were face-to-face -face and familial. That has changed quite a bit in the Christian Reformed Church. In, um, in print data, and the print data came in weekly and was voice unified. Today, our subconscious arenic orientation machinery is deluged by political and religious data, only some of which is from the CRC sources. Whether you watch PBS or Fox News probably has more to do with your implicit assumptions about the combinations of relevance realization and your agent arena relationship within the Christian Reformed Church. What should a monofocal creature pay attention to? Your local church? What your spouse thinks about your local church? What your kids think? How does it all fit in and fit together? Confessionality was sort of a rough reckoning of navigation for the church. Harry Bohr, who spent his ministry in Nigeria, imagined that how the CRC said theological subscription went should be how it works. In many ways, a portion of this book goes into his disappointment 
that, in fact, the confessional machinery of the Christian Reformed Church did not work the way he would want it to. That's why gravamen and that whole issue will probably come up during this denomination, during this meeting. And in fact, one of the things that if Better Together wanted to actually get into this, that's where they should go exactly in terms of trying to figure out whether I had done a video on, did I do that video? Gosh, I do, I do so many videos. On Gravamen and the history of that in the Christian Reformed Church with, uh, with Cedric. I, yeah, that was a video. It's probably the last one I did on this topic. He wanted to update the CRC with respect to reprobation, but confessions are navigational for the community in some ways, not exactly explicit in terms of their content. A synodical study committee was what was needed to tell the church, even if you can't really follow all of these details, trust that the smarter lights among us understand it for you, and therefore there isn't a problem. And in many respects, everyone has sort of a low resolution, just in time, pragmatic mix of things they pay attention to. And fighting about election and reprobation was pretty low on many people's lists. And so the Synodical Study Committee drew some careful distinctions and basically said, well, Harry Bohr really isn't in trouble, but his argument really shouldn't bother us and therefore continue to go about your business. All it, Harry Bohr's whole ministry was conducted with these questions and he was definitely not satisfied with the outcome, which is why he wrote that book. Harry spent a long, fruitful career as a CRC missionary, in many ways out of subscription on reprobation, but, but did that really do anyone any real harm? He was frustrated, wrote his book, but for the most part, the body held together. Then things come along that are actions, like women in office. Now it's not just theory, it's behavior, and it's behavior that touches many, many churches. The reckoning people are doing is informed by Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the web, all of these things far more than a weekly publication, whether it be the banner or Outlook or Christian Renewal. I don't know that Outlook is still around. That's one of the old. So the women in office wars, the internet wasn't here yet. So that was sort of fought in print and in person. Where does the CRC stand with respect to Drag Queen Story Hour? What if a CRC pastor has their preferred pronouns on their office door on a dry erase board for easy revision as their gender identity continues to evolve? What if a CRC minister, after discovering that the web filter approach to battling online porn doesn't work, decides that Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber's uh, has a better idea and that the church should maybe give links to ethically sourced porn where the sex workers are adequately compensated? In the middle of the 20th century, what does it mean to be CRC seems to be seemed to be relatively easy. The liturgy was standard. The Psalter hymnal was standard. Everybody understood that at Fairwoods in Whitensville, Massachusetts, there was no swimming on Sundays. Uh, the Vanderclays, before they had showers in the bathroom, could go into the Fairwoods pond with a bar of soap and do a little scrubbing, but no swimming. Where does the CRC stand with... Re oh, I already read that. In the middle of the 20th century, what does it mean to be CRC? Seemed relatively easy. Liturgy was standard. The Psalter hymnal was standard. The Reformed Journal was the place to talk about heady things. The banner was a paper pulpit. And the likes of Grace Vanderclay wrote regularly in her column, Women's World. Doing arenic orientation and relevance realization then seemed like watching a missionary slideshow compared to living in the whirlwind of screens today. Right now, we basically crowdsource this sense-making. Abide sets the agenda for some, Hesed for others. Now Better, better Together wants a shot at our attention. So, um, so get one of the bigger names from Calvin to make a video. Lord have mercy on us all. And that's sort of where we're at. Does the banner still make sense? I think it could make sense, but what would the banner be for? And, and how would the banner be an avenue for sense-making in the denomination? And would it be on paper at all? Or does the banner, now this channel, for example, as with, well, I don't know the degree to which Better Together is sort of 
owned by Classis Grand Rapids East. Now, having said that, that's a big deal because, of course, Grand Rapids East is the Classis that Synod 2022 sent a committee to to say, you should change your position because you are outside of the norm of the Christian Reformed Church. I've mentioned before that Classis Grand Rapids East since 2016 has had a position paper on same-sex marriage up on its classical website, and nobody had a problem with it until the incident at Neyland. Now, I don't want to make it sound like the banner never touches these articles. If you go to related articles, you'll see that um, why we publish controversial articles. Unity, not, new, not, new, not unanimity, organizers of a third way. Well, let's, well, there's the article that deals with this. A new group is urged is urging members of the Christian Forum Church to consider a third way, allowing for disagreement within the CRC on the issue of same-sex marriage. Now, let's go back here. Not being involved or in the loop of any better together activities, I, the editor, was unaware of these perceptions. The first statement in that article in February 24, 2023 said, a new group is urging members of the Christian Forum Church to consider a third way, allowing for disagreement within the CRC on the issue of same-sex marriage. That's a local option. That's basically what all one body and and many churches have been asking for. That was the option on, that was the path on women in church order. I am... How could this not be interpreted as taking a side? The first paragraph, whichever way you look at this, whichever way you side you're on, it's the first paragraph. The group called Better Together, a third way, launched its website in mid-February, according to organizers. The site Third Way received about 3,000 visits from 44 different states on its first week online. Thank, uh, the group claims to include CRC members, leaders, pastors, churches. We, um, then it talks, um, we as Better Together, a third way, may have a long list of differences. The website states highlighting same sex marriage included, but there's committed to creating space for disagreement on non salvific ethical issues. I've wanted to do a, this whole, the way this salvific or non salvific debate boils down in the Christian Reformed Church. It's really not working. Listing the group's goals on Frequently Asked Questions page, the website states that encouraging spiritual practices that promote unity may lead to some decisions being reversed. And to one example could be We decided to accept the Better Together ad because we did not think their public stance violated the guideline. Using the same parameters that were used by the previous two groups, understood Better Together as not taking a position on either side of the same-sex marriage issue, but rather seeking unity, not unanimity across disagreements. That was our decision based on a general survey of their mission um, on their website and per our, and then also, uh, the, this did not change their impression. The steering committee of 14 pastors was named on the website. Four live in West Michigan area. The other nine are elsewhere in the United States. Even our steering committee, we do not agree on what God has in mind for faithful Christian, um, Christian stewardship, said Stephen DeWitt, pastor of Alger Park CRC. We've continued to do um, the group ministry side by side. Same-sex issue doesn't have to break us. Now, in many ways, I want what Better Together wants. In many ways, the local option is not the avenue to it. It's not going to work. My thinking, if you watch my videos, is that there should probably be, be a separation and have as much ties between, let's say, an affirming CRC and a traditional CRC so that churches and people can go back and forth over that gap fairly seamlessly. I don't know exactly how to do it, but to me, that would be a much better solution than a local option. A local option is not going to work. We worked through the local option with women in church office 25 years ago. I'm in favor of women in church office. Leave your comments below. Unsubscribe if you must. 
Um, but one of the things that we should learn from women in church office is that the process was by no means ideal. And I'm not saying we should have two separate denominations with respect to women in church office. The idea, the, the issues are also different. Canadian CRC pastors were not included in the Better Together initiative because of Canada's distinctive culture and context, organizers say. There's been an intentional effort to avoid any sense of co-opting the valuable voices found in Canadian churches, said Nate DeYoung McCarran, pastor of Fuller Avenue CRC. Someone else from um, Better Together heartily welcomes these Canadian voices, also deeply respecting their wisdom on how to address these complex challenges to a specifically Canadian context. Members of the Better Together Steering Committee told the banner that their churches have spent the last few years in difficult conversations around human sexuality and other weighty matters. Joel Koch, pastor of Covenant CRC in Sioux Center, Iowa, said his congregation has been wrestling like Job for a blessing. A third way for him is a way to talk with people who do not share the traditional view of marriage. C CR uh, Synod's 2022 confessional status decision on what constituted unchastity clarified what was to be understood as the teaching of the church to be held by members and office bearers, uh, ruling out plurality. Just because Synod says we must have unanimity doesn't mean we suddenly do, said DeWitt. Um, my church said folks on both sides of the human sexuality. Many churches, in fact, do. Um, they had, let's see, they had articles about the abide project no that's just the link to it the banner has covered the abide project they had they had an article here about that and we'll see if they covered hesed as well and here they had an article on the hesed project so again that's i think that's excellent can the banner work for the crc i don't know i don't know how the, the questions I have, it seems to me, I don't know. I think there's lots of different places for different aspects of the ecosystem. But what's, what's clear is that the arena in which, the media arena in which the Christian Reformed Church is living and working is a whole lot more complex. Now, you can survey the names and Many of these people are my friends. Some of these people I uh, helped bring into ministry. Um, many of these people are, are significant leaders in the Christian Reformed Church. And um, the difficulty with this project is it's unclear as to whether or not, it's unclear as to, well, is it simply a local option that they're proposing? They don't seem to have a proposal. They don't seem to have a way of keeping the family together. And I think many people would welcome that, but you've got to come up with the idea. You've got to say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. My own idea would be, frankly, to have a parallel denomination and a different synod and have those be in conversation with each other. I don't know really how you're going to get beyond it without having the kind of train wreck we saw in the Reformed Church of America. Now, whenever I talk like this, people, some people don't like it, but that's the way I see it. I'm happy to be wrong. I don't want to see anyone leave the Christian Reformed Church myself, frankly. It's just that I think the two directions are, have been going, they've been moving in different directions. Over a very long time, let's see, did I, I don't think I posted that one on Voices. The longer narrative in the Christian Reformed Church has been that of assimilation. The Christian Reformed Church has been assimilating into the larger North American church arena for a very long time. And the two major poles in that arena in very low resolution are the evangelicals and the mainline. And some of the Christian Reformed Church probably... 20% of it is sort of drifting mainline. Probably the other 70, 80% 
is moving evangelical. Now, of course, within evangelicals, there's there's a spectrum as well. And so, but that's that's the overall trend, and that's what's been happening in the Christian Reformed Church. So how to go forward? I don't know. If Better Together wants to participate in this, they'd better come up with an idea pretty quick before Synod, because at this point, just sort of saying, can't we all get along, is probably not going to keep anybody in the fold. So, yeah, that's what's going on. I hope this was helpful.